Inktober is just a few weeks away and if you're planning to do the challenge, it's important that you plan ahead on what you want to draw when October comes around. Quite frankly, while following the official prompt or whatever random prompt you see on the internet is a good way to do some practice and studies, it's not exactly a productive way to do the challenge. Now, don't get me wrong, following the prompts is helpful in a way that it gains you learning experience when you're drawing them. However, when I say productive, it should be something that can help you make progress in your professional career in the art industry. So in today's video, I'll be showing 5 different things that you can create during the Inktober challenge that is more productive than following random prompts. Besides, doing prompts may not be as fun and interesting, especially if you have certain things that you prefer to draw. These 5 things I'll be sharing, you can absolutely cater it to your interests. Alright, so the first thing you can do during the Inktober challenge, which is also helpful if you want to practice storytelling as well as improving your art is creating a one-shot comic. This type of comic is just a simple short story that is 4 to 20 pages long. I mean, you can go longer if you like, but it's not like those manga series that's so long and take forever to finish. I'm looking at you, One Piece. Now, creating one page per day is actually a bit ridiculous. I mean, it's feasible if you have nothing else to do for one month, but I wouldn't suggest it because that will destroy your wrist. Fun fact, manga artists in Japan that produce one chapter per week or per month actually have assistants that help them so they're not really doing it all on their own. So instead, what you can do is draw one panel per day. It's more manageable and it doesn't take the entire day to do unless you're doing a detailed background. You'd be surprised with the amount of story you can cramp with 20 to 30 panels. It doesn't need to be one singular comic for the entire month. You can create multiple stories during the duration of Inktober and create an anthology. By the end of it, provide that you didn't give up midway, you would have a comic that you can self-publish and sell whether digitally or physically in conventions. You can also put it in the list of projects you did in your portfolio. So it's absolutely a win-win. If your style is more cartoony, cutesy, chibi-ish style instead of comics, how about creating something that children can read? That's right, I'm talking about picture books. This is actually quite a popular market to get into and if you want to have a career in this niche, Inktober is a great opportunity to practice creating cute, educational, and light-hearted stories for kids. You can actually send the picture books that you finish during this challenge to art directors which can potentially nail you some work. While picture books are widely used in children's literature, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're only stuck creating picture books for kids. If you prefer to create picture books for older audiences, by all means, do it. Personally, I prefer seeing pictures rather than words in a book and I'm an adult in my 30s. To give you an example, I actually created this picture book during an October challenge a few years ago. This is catered for late teens to young adults and it has a content warning at the end. I did a small print run of it and sold it to conventions. Hopefully this gives you an idea or inspiration of what project you'd like to make. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to answer them. If you're more into animation rather than comics or picture books, don't worry, I got you covered. You can use Inktober as an opportunity to create storyboards. Storyboards are an integral part not just in animation but also in live action films. This helps the director plan the shots they want for the film. You can create one shot a day or one scene per day during the challenge. Now, shots and scenes are not the same thing. Shots are basically just one camera angle or take. Meanwhile, a scene is a compilation of multiple shots, usually in a single setting. For example, we have two characters speaking. This is shot one, this is shot two, this is shot three, and this is shot four. And these four shots comprise one scene. Now, because we changed the setting, this shot and this shot is a different scene now. If you like to learn how to storyboard, let me know and I'll make a video about it. Storyboards are usually fast sketches rather than detailed drawings because the priority here is to nail the camera angles so knowledge of perspective is very helpful. You can also plan your lighting on the storyboard. Here's some samples of storyboards I did in the past to give you an insight. Now, whether you want to produce the 
storyboards you made is up to you. If you want to get a job as a storyboard artist in a studio, you can use the ones you finished in October as a sample when you apply. Now, this one will surprise you and I bet you didn't think you could do this in October, but you can actually do 2D animation for this month-long challenge. Most 2D animation nowadays is done digitally, but you're free to use actual paper on animation. You're just gonna have to use a lot of paper. One fun thing you can do is flipbook animation and you can pretty much use a tiny notebook like this and just draw the frames on each page and when you're done, flip the notebook fast like this and you can see the movement. If you like to do animation for your Inktober challenge, you can approach this in two ways. One, you can animate one shot per day if you have a storyboard you can follow or you can create a looping animation like the ones you see in video games. This one is called sprite animation. You don't necessarily need to clean it up and you can just do sketches. It's actually not the animator's job to clean up and add details to the animation. The ones who do the cleanup, add in-betweens and color to the animation are the assistant animators. If you have the extra time, by all means, practice cleanup and in-between as well as it is helpful to have the skills if you want to work at a studio. You can add animation you finish during October in your showreel. Showreels are basically an animator's portfolio. Rather than a gallery of images, you compile the animations you created in a single video and that's what you usually send to studios when you apply for a job. Speaking of portfolios, the final thing you can do for Inktober Challenge is creating artworks for your portfolio. Now, there is a misconception about portfolios. I admit, I'm just realizing this now 12 years into my career as an artist. A lot of artists think that a portfolio is just a collection of your best and favorite works, but that's just half true. A portfolio is a heavily curated collection that showcases your skills at its best, catering to your target job and audience. I hate to admit it, but you have to incorporate some business practices in your portfolio. You have to consider what kind of style you'd like to work on, what audience and niche you'd be interested in, what job within the industry you'd like to apply for. It can't just be a mishmash of random works in random genres because it's going to get art directors and potential clients confused on what you're capable of. You know the phrase, jack of all trades, master of none? That's what you're gonna be if you're just being random with your portfolio. Because the goal here is to showcase your skills at its best, it's pretty ridiculous to do 31 different artworks for this challenge. So it's best to take your time and just focus on producing 1 to 2 really amazing artworks for one month. Regardless of what you choose to do during the October challenge, the most important thing is to have the passion, determination, and discipline to draw and create works of art that you can be absolutely proud of. If you're struggling to do inking, whether it's traditional or digital, I actually have a couple of tutorials that can help you. So click any of these two videos if you'd like to learn some tips and tricks.